ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Retro Gaming with Hopper. This is episode two of the 1975 Gottlieb's Soccer. Today, we're going to uh, start tearing this machine down to its bare nothing. <laughs> down to its bare necessities. Uh, we're going to pull the pull the switchboard up out of it. Uh, I did you know, last episode. You seen I pulled the pulled the playing field out of it, and I asked everybody what they thought about doing an LED kit on this. Uh, we'll see what everybody says. And I already took the sound, bolted the sound card out of it, and you can see I labeled my solenoids one, two, three, and I labeled my wires one two three because on this one there is no the only Jones plug is the one for the door the rest of the stuff has to be taken off of it the, the flipper switches uh, while the knocker you don't have to take the knocker out it just has to push on terminals but we got to take fuse panel out of it and before we can even pull this up out of here but that's all right that'll, that'll be sitting on the on the table there and I can take a look at that and see if we need to put new fuse holders in it and we're going to tear the, the back box all apart we're going to pull out the this whole whole panel here with the, all the switches and scoring reels on it that way we can we can take a look at it and we can clean them all up while it's out we can look at our our bonus bonus balls ooh you can get some bonus balls get all the jones plugs cleaned up for the back box and the play field and that's all in this episode we'll get this all tore down all get everything all cleaned up and we'll go from there i have found that by cleaning all the switches relay everything that you can clean up all the contacts everything cleaning them all up before you even try plugging it in to see if anything's going to work. You have a, the best chance of things working. Then you don't have to chase your tail looking for a problem. The one, the problems that you end up with after everything is cleaned, uh, and if you can, adjust all the switches, make sure they're opening when they're opening and closing when they're supposed to close and that'll alleviate and eliminate a lot, a lot of problems. Then when you do have problems, uh, you can kind of eliminate switches, but you can, you know, you still have problems. You'll still have a few problems with them because you don't get them adjusted just right on some of the stuff, but that's all part of these electrical mechanicals is just getting everything cleaned up before you even try and do anything with the machine. So let's go ahead and start getting this uh, tore down and getting it ready to be cleaned up. Here's the bottom set of contacts and relays. Sitting up here ready to be cleaned. There's our cabinet. Got our cabinet. We run the vacuum in here now. And has had kind of a, a rough life from the looks of it. Every one of these it broke loose. So we'll we'll stick some glue in there. We'll get some glue in it and get her stiffened up. And this back too. You can see it just comes off. Didn't really want to do that, but yeah, well, and there's our all of our back panel, the head unit switches and everything sitting there. We can get that all cleaned up. There's the glass. We'll straighten, we'll get it painted up and looking good. And there's the box, and we'll work on that too. So we got, this is gonna be a pretty long project. 
I'll get the door off of it so we can work on the front of this and get those security bar holes all plugged up and ready to go. But I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start cleaning switches. We'll get all these switches cleaned up on, the, on here. That way it's ready to go back in. We'll get the, all the switches and everything cleaned in the back box panel. That way that's ready to go back in. But I think first of all we're just going to worry about getting this all cleaned up, getting all of our electrical, electromechanical stuff cleaned up. So we know when we set it back down in, when everything else is, when we're ready to, everything's going to work. I was just kind of looking this over a little bit and I did see one problem already is the, the switch, tilt switch, is stuck closed, bent closed. So we know that was would have been a problem right off. Looked at all the fuses, all the fuses are good. And we'll get all the Jones plugs cleaned up. This is set at three ball, which is, eh, no, five ball for this machine. Two plays per quarter, five balls. That's <laughs> what it was when it came out new. Uh, where's the, let's see. We have our, oh, that's over on the other side. Here's our other panel with our, with more fuses and the Jones plug, our flipper contact. But you can see this game only has 28,008 plays on it. That's how many plays that was played on this. So that's, uh, well, that's a quarter for two games. That's uh, 14,000 and divided uh, with four, four quarters. Okay, folks, we got all of our contacts cleaned up this bank, that bank for the bottom. Cleaned up Joan, yeah, plugs here, here, cleaned up the female ends, and I cleaned up the male end. Here's our Jones plugs, those are all cleaned up. Ah, cleaned up my fuse holders and cleaned up all the contacts on the on this motor contact set cleaned up those Jones plugs cleaned up this bank of contacts and cleaned up our flipper switches Oops, those aren't flip here's a flipper switch. Clean those up. Both of those. You can see how nice and shiny they are. In there. Uh, got the playing field. All my contacts. Solenoid. Oh, there's some, uh, yeah, this little bank solenoids here. Got those all cleaned up on all the switches that I can get at from the bottom side. See I set the, just set the play field upside down in the cabinet. That way you can just, you can stand here and work on, on stuff instead of leaning over or sitting looking up trying to work up in the air. It's just a lot easier. Flip that sucker over and then you can work on everything on the bottom of the play field. Uh, we still have the back, the head head unit contacts to clean up. But first, while I, I'm going to bring that, bring that up here. But first, before we do that, 
I'm going to change all the sleeves in the, in the solenoids here. We'll get them all, all the sleeves changed out. We won't do the flippers because we have to rebuild these flippers totally. We got a lot of play. Let me get you in here. Here we go. You can see actually there where it was rubbing back and forth. There you can see the play on that end and on this end. Come on, focus up. There we go. It's the same thing. You can see we have a lot of play. The end of stroke switches are nasty looking. So we're going to go ahead and totally rebuild these, these flippers because these ones do need it. You know, there's there's more than just a little bit of play in these. It's really hard to do this one-handed to show you how much play is actually in those. There you go. Just too much play. And I know the sleeves need changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up and I'm going to show you changing one of the sleeves in one of the in one of the solenoids so you can see what we have to do to replace all of those. So let me get set up and we'll get busy on I think we're going to do do this one here I think that's where I have everything set up to to do that one. I did this one earlier and I thought well let's uh let's show everybody what it's like to to change the change a sleeve in one of these little solenoids. All right now on these pinball machines you know if you buy one of these that's you know been sitting around for a while you know especially on these EMs I would suggest changing the sleeves and all your solenoids because that little I'll show you once we get the sleeve to the sleeve but on these Gottlieb's these ones aren't bad at all I usually just take the whole whole bracket up off of here take those four screws out and you can just lift him right up out and the plunger will stay put right there. Now you can inspect your plunger. That one that one's pretty good. It still has a, a beveled edge on it. It's not all flattened out or mushroomed. Uh, the link. This is one of the kickers. One of your side kickers. The side kickers they get used a lot. So those ones I definitely would would change but the best thing is is when you get one of these things one of these old machines of it you know sitting around and oh when we put it away it was working uh, yeah that's fine but you know the longer they sit contacts get dirty and I would suggest clean before you even plug it in you know you're not going to pull one of these out of a out of somebody's basement or garage or wherever you find them sitting around and just take it home plug it in and expect it to work you're gonna have all kind of issues the first thing I would do to them is if nothing else clean the contacts there you can see we have our coil stop which is still still nice and still got some brass left on it so it's it's not all beat down. Our plunger isn't all beat down. Now here's our here's our sleeve. You can see that one's you know it, it's got some wear to it. These are made out of our plastic or or a nylon. 
And there's the new one. You can see how much thicker the new one is. You know, there, there's a lot of wear on that one. Now on these, on the solenoids, there is two different types of the solenoids on these machines. You have this kind that the plunger goes up in, goes up in here and rides back and forth. On the other ones, you know, the, the coil, what the coil does is it creates a magnetic field. And when you, when you hit the flipper or hit the contact, it turns the coil on, this becomes a magnet. Your coil becomes a magnet and sucks the plunger up and pulling and making it kick. The other type are the ones that have the metal rod put into it that are permanently fixed inside. These ones when they turn on this becomes the magnet and there's a little plate that kind of sits right over top of it with your contacts. And when it turns on it sucks that plate down and closes the contacts. Then when it when it's done it comes back up and it's only a fraction of an inch these are a lot quicker that's why on a lot of these you'll see uh, you'll see them they just tap 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 and that's just opening and closing those switches all the time that's what the two types of coils that are mainly in the EMs these ones never need rebushinged but over time a lot of these are turned on all the time like your lock coil, when you turn on the game, there's a the lock coil sucks down, turns the game on. Now those are on constantly, and they get a lot of heat in them. And if they get too hot, you'll melt all the varnish off of the wires, and then they'll start arcing across, shorting out, and not working. On these, this is, has a longer stroke on it, so they don't create as much heat. Unless it's like on a scoring unit or a, or a, a step unit. Those ones are constantly pulling back and forth, you know, moving like for the ball and the ball counter. Those ones don't work as much as uh, some of the other ones that do that. Just constantly pulling in and out. And if they stick, what happens is it'll start melting this bushing. That bushing will get all soft and gooey, and then your piston doesn't want to ride up inside of it very good. And when you see that, then you know you have a stuck switch or something else going on that's making that coil heat up that much. And when you see that, then you know you have to first change the coil, put the coil in, and then just turn it on for a little bit and see if, you, if, it, if that coil's stuck find out what that coil is running and if it's like on this usually it's one of these two contacts are stuck closed or you put new rubbers on it and when you put the new rubbers on it they suck down and and made contact and, and now the kicker's sticking out and that'll heat it up on the flippers if they're heating up usually uh, you might have a bad bushing or a link, bad center link or something like that that's uh, making it really hard for it to pull in and that coil will heat up. Most of the, the only coils that really heat up really bad are ones on stepper units and that because when that stuff gets stuck it, it's hard to track some of that stuff down and, the, and a lot of times the machine will still work and you can keep and somebody will just keep playing it even though that coil's back there humming along and you it it's just the way it is. But that's the first thing you you check out. But first thing, clean all your contacts. So when you do plug it in, you know all your contacts are clean. And you don't have to worry much about the contacts and as you're cleaning them like I said make sure you're they're adjusted and open them and close them like on on this style that has the little metal plate that holds your um, P 
piece that sticks out here and all your contacts are stuck through here and when it sucks down it closes them well when you're cleaning them you can push this down and see if they all open like they should and let go of it and see if they all open like they should and if they do then then you know that set of coils is good or that set of contacts is good and you don't have to worry about them sticking unless it's something else on the machine that's making them stay open or closed. Like I said these aren't very hard to change and it it's easy maintenance to just stand here and change out all your sleeves. Because after 40 years you know darn well that those sleeves are, have got a lot of wear on them and contacts like I said I don't care if uh, somebody says well when we put it away it was working you know that was 10-15 years ago you know we had just cleaned all the coil all the contacts I don't care you get it you make sure you clean them first before you plug it in you'll just have a lot less problems. You can cure a lot of headaches and a lot of problems with just simply cleaning before you start trying to play. I know you can't help yourself, you want to play. I want to play the pinball machine! Let's take it all, plug it in, play! You gotta you got to do stuff first before you can even attempt to start playing. Some of these machines could be, you know, 40, 50 years old. A lot of the stuff in them is still original. Sleeves could be original. Just depends on the operator. If he actually, you know, took time and did maintenance on his machines, which a lot of them didn't because they they have to be they're making money. And the more money you spend on them, then the less money you make. And if you're you're not the technician that does them, you're just the operator that runs around and collects the money out of them, then the machine's going to be down. And the longer the machine's down, the less money it's making. So there we have brand new sleeve, and we're ready to move on to the next one. So I'll, I'll replace all these sleeves on all my solenoids except for the uh, flippers because we're I have the kit ordered to redo the flippers and we'll get the get the flippers a flipping better you know flip flip flipping and the thumper bumpers we'll get them taken care of uh, the kick out holes up top and once those are all completed we can move on to the guts of the backboard of the head unit and you know I buy I just buy bags of sleeves I'm not gonna mess around and just count them up and oh okay I need eight sleeves no me I just buy bags of them because I go through them every machine I get in I change all the coil sleeves just another preventive and more reliable when you do that. Less headaches down the road. You sell it to somebody and then you gotta, they come back and said, uh, the, co this, uh, the thumper bumper is weak and you find out, well, it's just a coil because it's binding, or uh, it's just a coil sleeve because the, that sh this shaft is binding up inside the solenoid because it's so wore out. All of our switches are cleaned. Everything's done. There's the pile of old sleeves out of everything in here. The only thing left on the playing field is our flippers and we'll rebuild them when, they, when parts come in. I'm still making up a list of things I need to do. So now we can take the playing field down off of here and set it off to the side and bring up the headboard unit back box unit whatever you want to call it and get it all cleaned up and see if we have any solenoids any coils in there that need to be re-sleeved 
which uh, I looked and I didn't see any, but hey, you never know. And we'll get them, get that all done up. And then all of our mechanical stuff is all cleaned. Our bottom panel, play field, and back box. So let's get started. Let's get that cleaned up. So that's so all of our electromechanical stuff is cleaned and ready to go. So when we start plugging things in, we don't have to worry. Okay, we got the score panel. Everything on the back here is cleaned. All the scoring reels are cleaned. Stepper unit, credit unit, and this banker relays. Everything's clean on this. And even the, I reslaved the solenoid here and here on the ball kicker. So now we have that one, that's done, and that's done, and the play field is done. So all of our contacts are clean. Next on the agenda, I'm not going to start putting this back together yet. I, I want to uh, get this cabinet all cleaned up and straightened up before we put anything down in it. I'm going to pull the coin door off of it, and as you can see, we got some work to do on the cabinet here. We got the plugs, we got the holes from the uh, from the security bar. We'll get them patched up. Uh, we'll probably do some touch up after I clean up the cabinet. Touch up the cabinet. Uh, I got some holes back here where they had something bolted on. I don't know what. We'll get that straightened up. We need to fix this backboard here too and get her all cleaned up. That'll be in the next video. And there's the the head unit box. We got to get get after that and get that straightened up so it looks good. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you made it this far and enjoyed this series on this. Gottlieb, 1975 Gottlieb Soccer. We're going to continue on with this until it's finished. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and I'll bring you more cool pinball videos on these great EMs. Uh, I'm still um, working on getting some solid states. Uh, just hold in, hang in there while I will get some. Just has to be the right price for me. So until next time, see ya.